these 11 tools are what you should have if you are planning to interact with cases. Either you're building your own cases for your electronics projects or you are taking apart ready-made equipment for servicing and or uh, construction if you've bought ready-made cases. From the left we have uh, screwdrivers, large blade, medium blade and then two sizes of Phillips and two sizes of smaller screwdrivers. Notice that the two on the left are stricken with leprosy. For some strange reason I find that the Exilite, uh, some of them uh, get this white growth on the plastic. Maybe it has something to do with the temperature and humidity in the tropics but I wanted to take them in this state in case others of you in the audience have had a similar problem. We can clean them, we can put them in the sink and scrub them up with a brush and get off that white coating but inevitably it always comes back on the handle. Notice that the third one from the left does not have it and has never had it. So clearly it doesn't afflict all the tools. Also the green one next to the black plastic there has never had it whereas the red one gets it as you can see but not quite as bad as the two on the left. Anyhow, those are the screwdrivers you will need throughout your career. Large, medium and small standard flat screwdrivers and two sizes of Phillips screwdrivers and the actual part numbers will be in the comments below. Now on the right side we have the stuff that we use to deal with the nuts because most times we will be dealing with um, we could either be dealing with wood screws or bolts if we need to bolt heat sinks onto metal chassis or anything like that. So we have what I call the gas pliers or slip joint pliers then we have the large electrician's uh, plier which can be used not only to hold and grip but also to cut larger gauges of wire as required. Then we have our adjustable spanner or wrench and finally we have two popular sizes of nut drivers which should be all that you would require in the nut drivers. Again you can take a listing from below and order as required. For the actual construction of your electronic circuits you are going to need hookup wire and you are going to need therefore a wire strippers shown there with the red handles and uh, you will need the two tools on the left whether you are doing vero board or assembling kits. The edge cutters which is the left with the blue handle is used for clipping off the resistor capacitor leads after you put them through the board and solder and uh, the needle nose pliers shown there between the edge cutters and the wire strippers is used for bending the leads to get them into the board and is an indispensable tool whether you're dealing with soldering or even solderless breadboards as long as you are building any kind of circuits the needle nose pliers a good smooth and not um, serrated jaw needle nose pliers is indispensable the blue uh, track cutter on the right is used for cutting tracks uh, on your strip board which we are going to show you in a minute and of course your soldering iron what we're showing there is a 25 watt portable soldering iron this would be what you would buy if you have a very limited budget it would be far better to buy a Weller soldering station with where you can change the tips as well as the temperature of the tip all these parts will be the Amazon links will be in the description. 
Finally, for greater heat, faster job, and quicker throughput for those circuits that don't require a very fine tip, the soldering gun is actually a good option. I assembled an entire Heathkit television, color television, back in the late 1970s using this particular soldering gun. It's a hundred and a hundred and forty watts depending on how far you pull the trigger. One pull to the middle position gives you the lower heat and a harder pull of the trigger right down to the max gives you the higher heat. Here we show you part of a power inverter. Notice the transistors that are mounted with copious heat sink on the Vero board along with the large high wattage resistors. Now the reason why I'm showing you this particular project is to show you how we assemble electronics using this mechanism. As you can see we have used bolts to bolt the heat sinks and power transistors to the strip board. On the underside of the strip board we have parallel copper traces which are cut using the track cutter as you can see there. There you can see it. We're trying to keep it in focus. The camera or the focus is not doing the best job. Okay, there you can see where the track has been cut neatly using the track cutter tool. And uh, this is the mechanism by which we would do our assembly. Now notice you can put jumpers of hookup wire to make connections from one track to the next as shown there in the diagram. Whether you choose to use sorterless breadboard or whether you choose to build your creations on Vero board and mount them in your very own created wooden or metal cases, we wish you many pleasant hours enjoying your electronics hobby and we certainly hope that you have as much joy from it as it has brought to me over the last 55 years. Thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel and we would love to hear from you and your suggestions, your experiences and your comments in the space below. See you in the next video.